What's going on guys? Will Blandon. Today is a Sunday. And let me tell you guys, I had a absolutely amazing day today. I literally picked up a guy in down the street from West Farms Mall, Farmington, Connecticut, and brought him all the way to Stanford, Connecticut. Um, he was going to go to the train station, but he wanted to be dropped off at a bar, uh, Bobby V's in Stanford. And the guy gave me a $60 tip. I made about $79 on the actual ride. So I made about 80 bucks on the ride. He gave me 60 cash tip for bringing him up here and just being flexible. I made a couple stops for him. He had to stop at the store. Um, and I dropped him off at Bobby V's instead of the train station. But well, all in all, it was a very, very successful friggin' day today, guys. This is probably been my best day ever. I mean, I'm talking about way back in the beginning when I first started driving for Uber Lyft. This is probably better than that he was a little tipsy but he wasn't like drunk he was a little nice so I could tell he had drinks earlier and he was uh, I think he, let, he is in New York yeah he was going to go to New York but he wanted to take the train from Stanford thank God because I don't do New York trips so if he was going directly in New York I would have turned him down and uh, I would have just canceled the ride let another driver come out and get him but very good conversation. I explained what I do as an entrepreneur outside of Uber and Lyft. That I started my own company, um, and he was very impressed. He liked the conversation. So, sixty dollar cash tip, guys. That's got to probably be yeah to this date, all the way back from 2018 when I started originally started I think that's probably the biggest tip I ever got hands down it's got to be the biggest tip I ever got cash uh, yeah and granted this ride was a long trip even though I didn't have to go to New York this was all the way from Farmington Connecticut to Stanford almost an hour and a half I want to say probably about an hour and 25 minutes something to that effect really close to about an hour and a half but it was a Sunday so the traffic was a little bit better than normal there's still a lot of traffic once you get into once you get to like Bridgeport and then once you get into Stratford there's a little bit of traffic but all in all it wasn't bad as you know during the week obviously and I'm heading back and I'm probably losing money because I'm not picking up any rides in Stanford or in my original hometown of Norwalk because Sunday is known for New York trips. It's known for it. And I'm not taking nobody to New York today, especially now where it's, yeah, it was almost 6 p.m. on a Sunday. If I turn my app back on, I will get rides, guys. Guaranteed I will get more rides, but I'm done for the day. I'm at about 170 and some change with the $60 tip total. So all in all, in all it's probably been my most successful day as a part-time Uber and Lyft driver. This was on the Uber app. I chose not to take it off the Uber app. He actually offered, and some of you probably think I'm crazy for doing this, he offered to, to say, turn off the app and he would pay me the whole trip in cash. But technically, that's breaking the terms of service with Uber. It's not breaking the terms of service by taking a cash tip. But technically, it's breaking the terms of service if I were to turn the app off because the passenger technically is not covered at that point. And it will be solely on me to be 100% responsible. Not that uber tries to cover anything anyway we all we all know the deal 
technically Uber don't cover shit regardless, but if the guy got hurt or we got an accident, that would be their biggest gripe. The sole responsibility is on me once I turn the app off. So I kept the app on, even though I drove around, made a couple stops. I noticed Uber gets <coughs> Uber gets really nervous. The app gets really nervous when you're roaming outside of the normal directions and you're making stops and it asks me, are you okay? Is it an emergency? I just ignore that. Um, I want to believe they just are concerned. Like if you did get an accident or something like that, you want to report it right away. But I think it's just they're just concerned about what I'm doing because I'm veering off the normal route. And I didn't actually drop them off at the train station. I dropped them off at um, Bobby V's, which is around the corner, a couple streets around the corner from the Stanford train station. And he was happy with that. I was happy. Best day ever. I might just title this. Uber driver best day ever because it probably is. It's probably the best day I could think of full time or part time driving for Uber ever. Very productive day. The most money I've ever made as a part time driver, probably in full time for one trip. I don't remember making this much. Because I used to do New York trips often and I noticed these long trips, I feel like Uber takes a bigger cut. Me personally, I feel like that. Um, I'm sure you guys do. But by this guy giving me a $60 cash tip, he kinda, I'm kinda recouping some of that lost wage that I didn't get because Uber took their percentage. So it made me feel really good to get that cash tip, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. And what I'm gonna do with the cash tip I'm gonna use that for the next couple days for to cover gas. So that should be gonna cover me for quite a few days. Probably, to, probably not all of next week, but probably will cover probably half of next week. No, I might even cover all of next week because I usually only fill the car up halfway and it only takes me about $15 to fill this up because I always keep it on emergency uh, full before I start my day. So right now I got a full half a tank, not a full tank, but a half a tank <laughs> on my way back towards the Hartford area. And guys, I can't stop saying it. This has been a really, really productive day. And not to change the subject, but my software business, somebody was uh, text me actually is asking questions about the comp plan. Guys, my software business, there is no comp plan. It's very simple. You get 200, you're paying 225 up front. $25 a month for your text messaging services and to have a uh, to use the other softwares. And there is no comp plan. You make $200 every sale that you close. It's really that simple. The customers pay you $200. I get paid $200. But your second sale goes to your sponsor. So your first sale, you will get the whole $200. Your second sale, if you signed up under me, will pass to me. Your second sale will pass to me, but the same thing, when you sign up, start signing to people, their second sale will pass to you. It's very self-explanatory. It's like a two-tier affiliate program. It's not network marketing. I don't understand how much more you gotta understand. You sign up, you send the $200 to me, you're gonna pay 200. You're gonna pay your twenty-five dollars to the uh, the administrator, which is the platform, and you pay two, twenty-five dollars a month after that to maintain access to all these extra services 
and it's well worth it. I don't understand. Like, I'm just, I'm now thinking about just not even responding to people that are having a hard time understanding this stuff because it's kind of a waste of time. Because if they have no clue how this stuff works, you're going to spend a lot of time and energy trying to explain how this stuff works when you can literally just keep marketing to people that will understand it. I don't want to sound mean, but I call them time wasters. People that like to contact you, ask 50 million questions, and they don't get the software. Buy the software, and then if you have questions, you can talk to the administrator of the software. They will explain and answer any questions you have. It is not on to the person that you signed up under to sit there and explain a million questions. It's not that hard to understand. It's really not. But for some reason, people have a hard time understanding. And they claim, some of them claim they've been marketers before. So I'm kind of confused myself. You know, I didn't want to jump off in a tangent off the subject. But that was kind of bothering me. Um, MWR Financial that's doing great um, finally I'm starting to get people that get it the bill shredder I think is what got people to start checking it out because I recently got my Verizon bill lowered so I got my Verizon bill lowered they couldn't do my electric bill because um, I forgot the reasoning behind it they couldn't do my electric bill I'm going to put my insurance in soon. So the bill shredder allows you to get them to lower your bills without you having to deal with the headache of calling these companies and, you know, begging them to lower it. And they know what to say. They know the script. They will get your bills lowered. And some, they might not be able to get lowered, but keep submitting bills. And I guarantee eventually some of them will get lowered. And now you're saving money that you wouldn't normally had every single month guys that is worth the 149 in itself become a customer for only 100 you want to become a marketer as well as a customer is 149 simple cut dry you know it, the videos explain everything so same thing on my software business the videos explain everything guys if you watch the video three or four times and you still don't get it this is probably just not for you I don't I don't even know how to say it any other way this is probably just not a business for you and um, some of these people are uh, have used the text bot and they come over here to my software business and they don't understand it's made by the same guy how do you not understand like I don't I don't get it but I'm not gonna waste any time on those people. I'm just gonna move on. And uh, that's basically it. I'm just gonna move on and do what I gotta do because they just don't get it and I'm not gonna spend any more time and effort on them. So I'm just gonna do what I gotta do and um, get this money. But you see how being a part-time Uber driver could bring in Anywhere from easily, I would say 700, I would say 700 to probably a thousand a week, depending on where you are in your state. And um, yeah, if you drive 8, 10, 12 hours a day, you're going to make more than that, yes. But does that mean that you have to drive? eight hours a day to make money with Uber or Lyft? No. Whatever a full-time driver makes, cut that in half, you're part-time, but you can still make a hundred bucks a day. You know, possibly even $150 a day. My dream would be to make $150 a day. I'm only at, at about a hundred a day, part-time. But if I can add another hour a day and to get that 150, it would be worth it. Today I ran a little late because I had to go all the way to Stanford. But 
normally I would not be stuck in traffic for an hour but uh, this has just been a normally long trip but well worth it I made over 170 today I'm probably at it like 175 today um, I'm so excited I wouldn't even be surprised if I get home and take one more trip for the hell of it because this has just been a, such a productive day but I see this looks like an accident up ahead so I see this is gonna be a long commute back that's the only thing I hate uh, about driving afternoon like after 5 p.m. is the traffic is just horrendous and I don't even know when it slows up I want to say probably 7 it'll probably slow up but it's just ridiculous it might not even slow up at 7 so I'm thinking these people are going back towards Hartford so I don't even see this slowing up it, this is just crazy guys I don't miss commuting from Nog to Bridgeport at all anymore. I remember I used to take the 95. I'm on I-95 right now. And I remember when I worked at Bed Bath & Beyond, every night taking this ride back from uh, Norwalk to Bridgeport. Woo! I don't miss this commute, guys. I really don't. But uh, again, this has been a productive day. If you want more information on my software business or uh, NWR Financial, get your finances in order, guys. Once you get your finances in order, all this become easier, even becoming an Uber driver. Because if you get your finances in order, you don't have to stress out so much about making a full-time living just doing Uber and Lyft. You could do some other stuff. You can make money on my software business, start a YouTube channel, start a podcast. Get in a strategy session. Some of you want to get me on the phone and ask questions. It's going to cost. My time is money. $47 one time strategy session. Information will be listed below the video. Um, I'm witnessing a five car accident here woo woo that's a bad one guys and I got this asshole behind me trying to start another accident but that's all I got for you guys today I want to thank you guys for continued support and watching me ramble on through my life and uh, building my holding company to the point where someday this will not only be able to support me but make me a real good middle class lifestyle that's that's the goal it's not just to make just enough to replace my job but to live a middle class lifestyle one day just from the earnings I put in my holding company Thank you guys again. Subscribe, like, comment, click that bell icon, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.